Hello friends, now I will be talking to you about acute myeloid leukemia. AML is the abrupt onset of malignant transformation of myeloid. stem cells in the bone marrow and the common age of AML is between 25 to 60 years is the age. It is more common in Down syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome and Turner syndrome. Now, let us see how we classify uh, AML. We have FAB classification. We have M0, which are also known as minimally differentiated. They are Milo peroxidase negative. This is a very important point. Then we have AML without maturation M1. Here only 3 percent are myeloperoxidase positive. M2, they are AML with maturation. It was without, this is with maturation. This is the most common type of AML. Classically in these 8, T821 translocation is seen and IU rods are positive in these cases. M3, promyelocytic AML, M3, very, very important point. In these DIC is common. IU rods are present and classically we see M1517 translocation. In M3 variety, there is abnormality in the retinoic acid metabolism, that is vitamin A metabolism is abnormal. That is why in the treatment of M3 we use ETRA. ETRA is all transretinoic acid. Myelomonocytic is M4, it is more in related associated with INV16. Monocytic M5, it typically involves the older people and patient has gum hyperplasia. Erythroleukemia is M6 variety. It is classically most common in therapy rated acute myeloid leukemia. And the M7 is megakaryocytic leukemia M7. Myelofibrosis is very common, more commonly seen in below 3 years in Down syndrome. Remember something unusual because the common age of AML is between 25 to 60 years, but this can occur in children also. So, the main highlights of this table is MP negative, MP 3 percent and this is most common T821, DIC, M1517, ETRA, INV16, gum hyperplasia, therapy related, myelofibrosis and in children. These are the important points that you should remember. Well, we have seen the classification of AML and now we talk about what are the important points in the pathology that you should know. So, in the pathology, when we see the peripheral smear, you get azerophilic granules in AML. Just for your recall, azerophilic granules are not there in ALL. AE roots are present, T821 
TT is positive only in 5 percent no pass positive material. Remember, TT was positive in 95 percent cases of ALL and pass positive material was seen in the ALL, but these two are not seen in AML. And of course, myeloperoxidase staining is characteristic, this I discuss also, MP is very characteristic of AML. Now, what are the cl clinical features? Patient usually has abrupt onset and what happened? Because it is a disease of the myeloid series in the, uh, in, the uh, in the bone marrow. So, abnormal cells are multiplying very fast. That is why normal RBCs is reduced, normal TLC reduce, normal platelet are reduced. So, it lead to fatigue or anemia. This lead to prone to infections and this lead to bleeding tendencies. In fact, these three symptoms are also seen in ALL all because of suppression of the normal WBC, RBC and platelet. What else we see in AML? We see chloroma, solid mass are seen, gum hyperplasia are seen in patient of AML. Testis involvement and CNS involvement are not a prominent feature of AML. These two, that is testis involvement and CNS involvement is more common seen in ALL. And like ALL here also, we have generalized lymph adenopathy, generalized lymph adenopathy, liver and spleen are enlarged. Now we talk about investigation. Best investigation, if best initial is complete blood count, peripheral smear where we see blast cells. But most important is bone marrow examination where we see blast cells. Blast cells are more than 20 percent in the bone marrow and of course in the peripheral smear also. And we do flow cytometry to know the type of subtype of leukemias and they also tell you the various CD markers present on the surface of the cells. Then let us see what are the pro prognostic factor, poor prognostic factor so called high risk cases. Remember, single most important prognostic factor is cytogenetic abnormalities. So, let us see what are the poor, good and intermediate risk factor or cytogenetic abnormality. So, remember poor prognosis or so called high risk cases, the cytogenetic abnormality are complex karyotype. INV3, monosomy 7 and 5 and del 5q, they are high risk or with poor prognosis. Other are age above 60 year, high LDH level or expression of MDRI gene, very high TLC count at the time of presentation and failure to achieve complete remission after the induction therapy, they are the high risk or poor prognosis, uh, high risk means the high chance of relapse. Good prognosis, so called low risk of prolapse, relapse, TA21, INV16, T1517 and M3 variety, they are the good prognosis. Intermediate prognosis is no cytogenic abnormalities. So, now we start treatment. 
we treat the supportive therapy for nutrition, antibiotic, and other th and uh, and anemia. Then the specific therapy for induction phase is cystocin. Arabinocyte plus donorubicin or Ida rubicin. This is what we give in induction therapy. Well, but in M3 variety for maintenance, we can give ETRA or in resistant cases, we even can give arsenic also. Now, what happened? Those once we have done the induction phase, after that in low dose, low risk patient, these patient, for, for consolidation, we use high dose cystocene. But in intermediate variety, these patients, we use allo or autogenic, autogenic bone marrow transplantation. But in poor prognosis or so called high risk cases like this, we always go for allogenic, allogenic bone marrow transplantation. This is all about acute myelite leukemia. Thank you very much.